Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now in a prior video, we got a first look and impression of the Mantis X10 Elite Diagnostic System. At this point, we've started to go through it, got a preliminary look, but today I'm gonna start some basic dry fire, show you some of the screens, just really get into the process here and see how it works out for me. And so other than that, a number of videos to come, getting into live fire, getting into different sort of firearms. At this point, I'm talking pistol, but we're gonna continue to move through a progression. So today is video two of a video series. And if you like what you see here, keep on watching. But with that said, I have a whole bunch to do and a whole bunch to share with you. And if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what I'm about to get into, do me a favor, stay tuned. Now, before we get too far, I would like to say thank you very much to the people at Mantis who did provide this for review. And so, as I mentioned, if you want to see the initial unboxing and some of the preliminary information that got me to this point, do me a favor and check me out on one of my prior videos. But today, I'm going to start getting into the menus, getting into the screens, some of the basic diagnostics to give you an understanding, and just a real quick overview of the dry fire practice. Five shots, dry fire practice in open training so here is the drills you'll see that one there is blinking and that says open training please double check your chamber and all magazines to ensure they are unloaded and dry practicing in a safe environment well as we left off in the very last one i have installed my bore laser so that is the case my magazine safe condition and we are good. I now say confirmed. Select whether you are shooting live rounds, if you are a right hand or left hand, and if Mantis device is facing forward or backward on the pistol. Backward has the USB facing down range. So for me, my USB is facing backwards, which means this is the forward mounted position. And there's also the ability to mount this on the side or on top of the firearm. So press start. Dry fire, right hand, forward facing. And that's pretty straightforward. As you see, very simple interface, just has these little toggles. So between dry fire and live fire there. So that's cool. And then right hand, left hand, and forward, backwards. And at this point, start. Mantis X is now analyzing your movement data in real time and looking for dry fire practice shots. Go ahead and take five shots now. So I did set up a little bit of a target off in the distance, which is going to help me just to enhance my overall experience. So I have already racked this, but in practice, coming up on target, one, two, three, four, five. So those are my five shots at this point. It says great shooting. Go ahead and tap the stop button to see some summary statistics of your five shot session. As I tap on this, okay, done. All right. So now it's starting to show me my diagnostics. And at this point, it's kind of giving me some pointers. So two little trigger finger in this particular case. I'm actually gonna take some screenshots here and annotate it on the screen so you can see what this is telling me. But right now, I'm trying to get kind of out of some of these screens. And it says, great shooting, go ahead and press the stop button, which I see reset and train, but it's not giving me stop, which I don't know. Can I go back, say okay, start? It's kind of frozen. So that's an, oh, there's stop, boom. Okay, I don't know. This screen here is stuck right now. So I'm gonna go back to my open training, say okay. Step one, do five shots, dry practice in open training. I'm trying. Okay, so I'll try this again. Five more shots. I literally just racked it and it already says I took a shot. Let me go back. Reset. Start. Okay. 
picking up the firearm. I have not shot yet. Five shots. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now this seems to have worked better this time. I can hit stop and this seems to be working. So it's showing me a breakdown of my shots. So here you can see an average score of an 87.9, which again, I'm hoping this shows me what I'm doing well, but more importantly, what I'm not, because well, how am I supposed to make corrections if it doesn't show me? And it can show already that in my five shots, well, this particular one here on the right hand side, as I click that, it says too much trigger finger. So at this point, it's showing me a breakdown. Too much trigger finger means that the pressure applied by the trigger finger during the trigger press was uneven. This issue is caused by an incorrect placement of the index finger on the trigger. To correct this issue, place the center of the pad of the index finger in the middle of the trigger and press uniformly backwards. Make sure the pressure is not applied on either side of the trigger and that the motion of the trigger finger is linear. Now I can tell you that I probably am doing this, if I had to guess, and not this. That is something that, you know, you have to kind of get used to that. So for me, as I get on this, again, not pulling the trigger on a curve, but more straight back is something that I think I'm going to need to do. And this should show me, and I'm hoping that it does. The next example, looking at the top, as I press the top little diagnostic, breaking wrist up. Breaking wrist up means that the wrists relaxed during the trigger press and the handgun moved up from the aiming position as it fired. To correct this issue, keep the wrists locked and straight during the trigger press. Make sure that the angle of the wrists stays the same throughout all phases of the shot. Interesting. So in other words, I'm probably dancing around a little bit, trying to find my aim, as I'm pulling the trigger back and making my shot. So instead, I need to be prepared, fully still, now work on my trigger press. So that's things that I would have never picked up on. I probably wouldn't have known. I haven't had time for formal training. Like I told you in the first video, I've only gone once. And that was just enough to you know, really start to be dangerous. And I've probably picked up a huge amount of bad habits since. So this is going to hone in on all of that and pretty quickly. Now let's just say I come back into the app and I want to look at my history. I do have my history. It shows here. Now, unfortunately, I had a single shot that didn't do much. It seems to have registered that one errant shot. But then I came back in five shots, first training session, average of an 87.9. I can click on that session and open it right up. Not to mention, after this gets above 50 shots, it'll show you all of your shots, all of your averages, and then a complete diagnostic, which is really cool. But again, as we get into each one of the sessions here, I can go back into my individual shots. And let's just say I go to shot four, which was a 91.9. Well, as I click on it here, and open it up, it's gonna show me different information about that shot. So it gives me a breakdown of my trigger press movements, my hold movements, and then kind of a different little scenario here of each thing that went on. So if I click on my fourth shot and we look at the actual sort of diagnostic screen, you can see in blue, my aim, in yellow, my trigger press, the break, and then the follow through after the shot. Which clearly, if you look at the blue line and you see how it swings up, that's what I was saying. It's showing me what I'm actually doing, that in my aiming process, I was pulling the firearm up. Now my trigger press was not terrible, had a little bit of movement, but a little bit better. And then after the shot, well, of course, at that point, 
there's not a live load in here, so I wouldn't expect to see the recoil. So that's why after the X and the brake, at that point, it's pretty much steady. And so again, as I go through all five of my shots, each one with its own characteristics, I can look for trends, look for patterns of behavior, and start to hone in and correct it. That is the absolute magic of the Mantis X10 Elite. And so at this point, I've tried to make it a habit to get down to some more dry fire practice. I wait till the kids go to bed, get myself set up, and just enjoy a little bit of time working on the different things that at this point, I'm starting to realize I need to do. My trigger press, my overall steadiness with the firearm, my muzzle control, all the little things that were really at a basic fundamental level, a problem, but I just didn't realize it. I kind of wasn't paying close enough attention. I wasn't seeing it. I wasn't aware. And now with the Mantis X10 Elite, I am aware. And not that I've done a huge amount of practice at this point, but I have definitely done enough to start to get an understanding I've basically at this point used this system a number of nights in a row, starting to get some practice, starting to get a feel for this, and something that I know will translate once I get to live fire out at the range. And beyond all of this, a ton of other drills. So you end up with a holster draw analysis. You have daily challenges, which they call field strip. You have all these drills, open training, shot timer, par timer, shoot no shoot the Mantis X benchmark. That'll be cool to see what it is. Endurance. I mean, tons and tons and tons of different courses, different things that you can get into, and all in one package. So again, going back to my initial impressions and initial point, I think if I get into this and just take my time, work through it, and make this part of what I do, there should be some drastic improvements quickly. And so at this point, this is kind of a wrap on video number two. Just a basic overview of the screens, the different diagnostic tools. And so video three, I'm gonna start to really get into firing practice, live fire practice. I'm gonna first go shoot a bunch of rounds, see how it comes out without the diagnostic tools. Compare that against it with, and then start to make the adjustment. So there you have it. That is video two. And with that, I would like to say thank you very much to the people at Mantis who did provide this for review. And for the rest of you, if you like this content, do me a favor, take a look at my Outer Limitless channel, which is more of my primary gear. On that channel, I cover everything from hiking, camping, and backpacking excursions, all the gear that goes with it. So from sleep systems, shelter systems, knives, axes, backpacks, flashlights, you name it, that's my Outer Limitless YouTube channel. So, all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.